Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi I'm trying to get the kids to fast What's the best age to encourage that? In some communities they make kids fast from age of four Yeah four I don't think you, you even got the mental capacity they have to be cognizant and, and understanding of what you're trying to accomplish then otherwise it's just you know hunger screaming and crying of why you're abstaining. So as soon as you have the ability seven, eight years old and you basically training this is the month we don't eat and then you say, okay let's not eat till seven o'clock or till twelve o'clock, eleven o'clock lunchtime is basically cutting out the snacking. And if that goes okay, they're able to do that, then you celebrate that they break their fast at uh, noon time and they say, okay let's if you can, can we continue again till the time that I have to break my fast. So every family trying to do it in a way in which their children are, are capable and slowly introducing it and uh, give a gift every day that they accomplish it. As Allah is offering you paradise, offer them daily gifts. If other religions have a, a one day a year in which they want to bring gifts and they make a, the whole world light up for those ridiculous uh, events, you make 30 days of gifts for Ramadan. Put the lights within your house of Ramadan lights and this is 30 days of gift giving and everybody to their budget. So you can put bag of candy and uh, goodie bags and whatever it is and make it a very festive and, and beautific occasion. Or if they're older and they want allowance to buy something that's okay every day you fast here's our Ramadan chart and these are what you'll be getting every day for your fast. So we reward and a system of rewarding is how Allah lures adults. That you get paradise, you get lights, you get your du'as to come true, you get your, your rizq to be uh, granted and, and to be purified and sustained. Then same thing then we do to our family so that it's a very festive and beautiful occasion. And even nice if their friends see it, oh what is that? Say, we have 30 days of gifts, you guys are poor, you get one day, we have 30 days. So it's excellent for da'wah too, especially living in the west. InshaAllah. They make big thing about their one day celebration. So make it like our religion is great. Look we have 30 days of gifts, join our religion. <laughs> really kids they go crazy thinking. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Oh I want to have this, I want to have that, they make such a big celebration. But if all their kids saw that we have 30 days of gifts that they're going to go back to their parents, why you don't join this group? They have 30 days of gifts. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi when sitting in a bus or train we can't ask for madad as explained very well in the Timeless Reality book. What can we do as a means of protection? Just keep yourself in wudu before you got on the bus and the train and keep your taweez and your protections and make your madad and support and don't fear anything, there's nothing to be protected against. The teachings are not to make people scared but to keep uh, people to be strong. So what, what's going to happen to somebody when you get on a bus or a train? Somebody going to come to attack you because uh, you don't be scared. Allah with you, Prophet is with you, 
and whatever energy you feel is uncomfortable, alhamdulillah Allah wants you to carry something. As soon as you get off you wash, you go home and it uh, continues. But you know worrying about everywhere we go and every step that we're going to make for what? Make ourselves to be strong and to, to fear nothing. Everything is just an illusion from shaitan, that's why we started tonight is to tell you that the gate of entry is uh, shaitan playing with people. So now shaitan put fear and rules by fear. If you understand that concept then you understand the power of faith and the power of meditation and contemplation to build your faith. So he told everybody, you're going to die and nobody could see the enemy. There's an unseen virus and he convinced you you're going to be dead and as a result people's own power of manifestation made them to be sick and cautious, very fearful. Well your own fear and the physiology of fear is you weaken your own immune system by believing what he's saying. But if you take it as, okay people are going to be sick, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel, I'll increase my zikr and take my necessary precautions. Stay away from people because those people whom are weakened and become weakened they will become sick and spread things. So it means that shaitan operates through the brain and making people to have fear. But you don't say it doesn't exist, say, no it does and shaitan going to manifest it to be even stronger and more spread out until everybody sees that fire and now is petrified by the fire. So faith and spiritual practices to build the faith so that you're certain, not that you're talking from your lips that you, you believe but in your heart the certainty of your faith. And the power of your faith is, you know, although I walk through the valley of death I know that my Lord is with me. But you have to be able to say that, that the Lord is with you by your good deeds and good actions. Not because you just want to say it but you have to believe it. So this even more, everyone says, oh don't do the Ramadan, oh so hard, so hard. New people, so what hard? This is an illusion of fire, enter into it. Now go back in our lives and think about everything else that was an illusion. That, oh there's going to be a lot of people doing bad things and bad energy in this place. Okay, but you have your ta'weez, you have your practices, you're not engaging in anything bad, you're taking a ride home from work and from work back to your home. Oh, what's going to happen with you? Shaitan's illusions and delusions make your connection, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa What does it mean by Ramadan opening the reality of taste? What does it mean? It means that when you're hungry <laughs> and you think like what that date is going to taste like. But let's say that Ramadan was like all your life. And uh, every day you're thinking, I wonder what that date tastes like. And then you read a book, it's very sweet. Uh, it tastes like candy. Uh, it tastes a little bit like molasses, a little bit like brown sugar, tastes a little bit like this. And so for your 30 years you're reading about that. Until one day you say, I wonder what this date tastes like. And this is the reality of spiritual practices. So when we're asking in Ramadan to fast, we're not only asking Ya Rabbi, oh I just, you know, I, I don't want to be hungry but Allah's opening something by abstinence. So abstain from a life of tasting food and taking only pleasure in eating, you live to eat, we live to eat, we don't eat to live. Anyone who wants to test eat to live, you do 40 days of lentil. So you say, I'm going to eat, I'm going to l eat to live because after five days of lento you can't stand it because it's not exciting for your nafs anymore. You're then literally eating just to survive, then your spiritual power begins to open. So then this has tremendous realities. Ramadan then is an opening time in which Allah will open the senses. 
The one who enters into fasting they make intention, I want to fast with my ears so that my spiritual ears open. I want to fast with my eyes so my spiritual eyes open and meditate. I want to fast with my sense of touch and begin to abstain from too much pleasure in my touch, don't need to go too many places, need to put myself in some uncomfort and discomfort, all of these senses can open. And so every Ramadan Allah opens the servants of muraqabah and tafakkur their different senses because they're fasting with all their senses. If they've been trained by us and by these realities they know that they should be fasting with all their senses. So that one year Allah will begin to open the fast of their ears in which they're not hearing bad and as a result of fasting in Ramadan they begin to hear their soul and consciousness more and more and become stronger and stronger. So all of it, all of it has a deep reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Please forgive my ignorance, uh, please tell us deeply about what is annihilation into annihilation. InshaAllah you have to get the meditation book that as soon as you annihilate and take a path in which to be nothing, Imam Ali described alayhi salam that even in my annihilation there's annihilation. And we've described many times that when you start to meditate people become delusional in which they're sitting closing their eyes visualizing that the sword of paradise is coming to them, jubba of paradise is coming to them, um, traveling here, I'm getting this, I'm doing that and now that meditation became delusion. So that wasn't the way, the intention was, I'm nothing, I want to be nothing. I don't need to get the first right to the foods and to the, the, the vegetables, I took a path in which to be nothing. I don't get angered by everything because I was uh, disrespected, I became nothing. At the same time very nafsani is then meditation in which you visualize yourself with your shaykh and I'm nothing and that your light and energy come and make me to be nothing, melt away to be nothing. And as you're meditating more and more in that ocean of uh, power like a fire that comes onto you to melt you in which I don't exist and see ourselves now dressed upon the shaykh, that the shaykh is dressing upon me and that I'm nothing and I'm ceasing to exist and that my shaykh exists in my place. And as a result of that dress continuously as soon as I meditate and there's some sort of a gift is coming to me, a jubba is coming to me, a horizon is opening, I'm nothing, I'm not that one. I'm asking just to enter into an ocean of power like lightning everywhere and that lightning to dissolve me. So many temptations will come to the servant in their mind and the mental temptations and those have to be fought as to not think there's something and don't describe your dreams, don't describe uh, anything to people because that's a way of trying to be delusional to people and trying to control people through your nafs. You may not know because the nafs is writing you, not the person asking the question but people, right? The nafs is, is writing us like a wild bull <laughs> riding everywhere. So he's doing things to people they don't even know it's being done to them. So if you go around talking about your dreams, what in reality are you doing? You're saying that, you know how high my status is? I met with this, I met with him, I met with them, I met here, I met that, that respect me. That's why the nafs is saying it, so no but that's not the intention shaykh, well you're not the one talking, your nafs is. It's not your soul sitting on the chair. If your soul saw those things and then got an opportunity to sit on a chair of authority it would never speak like that. But that's when your nafs sits on the chair and want to tell everybody, you know what I saw? It's like this, I went here, I went like this, I went like that. So that what? Respect me. 
because now the nafs is becoming stronger. So annihilation into our annihilation is an immense in, in, intense process in which to catch yourself at every moment in which not to talk about the self, not to glorify the self, not to elevate the self and that to be nothing. And in that ocean to be like a water in an ocean of lightning so that you become feeling the lightning, one with the lightning. And it's an ocean of power in which you enter in nothing is anywhere but a lightning and enter into that lightning to that it hit you and you become one with that power that coming and vanishing, coming and vanishing. Not that we entered into visual states and we're sitting in associations and, and things are coming, that, that is not the way of annihilation. That's just the ego playing games and making your mind like a video game fantasy movie and you just fantasize endlessly. So that very, very dangerous and very, very tricky. This state of annihilation they talk about is be nothing and just fire like an energy overwhelms you. Your energy comes so strong things can, you know, you're sweating, your clothes are wet, everything because you're, you're heated up, you get heated up person. So it's not in the mind delusional thinking, I'm seeing all these great things but literally they transform into heat, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Regarding who sits in the chair, does zikr have to be read out aloud in order for nafs and shaitan to burn? Example, as we're walking around and doing our zikr silently, does this also burn them? Sure. Because the chair is inside, the chair of authority is inside, it's not an outside chair. So as soon as you're doing zikr, the seat of the heart becomes very heated. And if you do khafi and breathing khafi, then that's very powerful. So the, the people who can achieve the silent zikr, khafi and, and meditate and breathe in that state, they ignite their entire being again like I just described, fire. They heat up like a, like a fire. As a result nothing can sit on that chair. <coughs> so the zikr and everything is meant to be silent, not meant to be out loud. Sometimes you start in your start fa starting phase a little bit out loud to push away all the bad energies. But once you're strong in the muraqabah, strong in the zikr, Naqshbandiya is all based on khafi, it's silent. But because of the zikr in the west and new people that don't even know Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem, it's done out loud to attract people. But the, 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 the actual tariqah practices, historically practice is strong in their meditation, strong in the connection with the shaykh and they enter like a state of death and they begin their practices, not moving so that they can leave their body and their practice will be with through their, through their soul. So those are stations that are difficult to achieve but the way is built on that principle. So anytime you move then it becomes a part of the body action and not the soul action. But yeah inshaAllah. <coughs> Assalamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, can the nafs make one to keep praying more and more when they have their other awrads to do and then feel tired? How to determine if the soul or nafs says that? Yeah, if first you have to feel if you have OCD. So if you have some other issues in your mind, you have to be careful of that because the the spiritual praying is that you prayed and then now you want to pray more and connect and meditate, do your zikrs, everything has to have a balance. If there's OCD and issues with you know shaitan whispering that your prayer was done wrong, that's not from the soul, not, not repeat it. You know what? Then not repeat it and oh, uh, oh I started wrong and then that's OCD, that's the shaitan or is it overly satanic something. So anytime somebody has OCD issues, the shaitan is whispering to them, it's too close to them. Your wudu didn't count, go do it again. Then they go, they go in there and spend 40 minutes 
I mean in and out of the bathroom washing until their skin is like burning from water. Those are OCD issues, it's not uh, from the soul. So it's nafs and shaitan both destroying the person. When you feel that you're OCD about being clean, go out and put your hands in the soil in the backyard and take the, the moor that the, ha, has the ho, holy dirt of Karbala. If you don't have uh, outside uh, clean soil or take the sand from the beach, put it in Tupperware and keep taking the sand and putting on your hand and put the sand so that come against what shaitan is making you to fear. Nobody ever died from hands that had soil on them. So whatever shaitan is whispering to you that you didn't do your wudu, say, I did my wudu, it's fantastic alhamdulillah before they were doing wudu in a cup. So it wasn't about the water, it was about the intention. So if shaitan is whispering to you then, then you know you're under attack and that he shouldn't be so close able to whisper. Means then your connection has to be stronger, your meditation has to be stronger or if, if you know there are, are actual medical issues then you have to have your med medication. Because if it's medication issues then none of your practices will bear fruit without your medication because everything then will be tampered with, every salah will be wrong, every wudu was wrong, <coughs> every zikr you did was wrong because shaitan is right there playing with you and you're, you're, you need medication and you're not taking the medication so everything has to have its reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what is the best sadaqa jariyah we can give i.e. orphanage, well, etc.? Yeah, all of them. Prophet love the, the water, that to, to give people water because it's a life for it. So somebody who doesn't have access to water or difficult access to water <coughs> then it's a flowing fountain in which we ask that Prophet to give us an Yawmul Mashar when the water of Kawthar will be available in which to nourish us, dress us and elevate our status by just the drink of kawthar to be raised upon the servant. And those are for the servants who have this immense love for Prophet and what he wants to give to them and that their life was about helping and, and trying to sustain and take care of people. Then what's offered to them is the kawthar that you gave in dunya water and we give you an akhirah kawthar. Inna atainaka al-kawthar means all of the, uh, in the companions and Ahlul Bayt of Prophet they are given the right to distribute the kawthar because they are kawthari, their knowledges are all kawthar. It's a flowing abundance from the oceans of abundance that kathir, that beyond imagination from the presence of Prophet So as you take the knowledges from them you're being dressed by the kawthar. As you give water in their names then Allah inshaAllah give to you access to the kawthar to raise your status in paradise and in the grave to a lofty station. So it means then dedicate the wells in the name of Prophet in the name of Ahlul Bayt, in the name of your children and then inshaAllah that take away difficulty from the children that when your children only ask is good and bad, good and bad and nowadays they email that their kids are gangsters, doing this, doing that, what should we do, what should we do? Make wells in their name so that the people whom are, are taking from that, taking that barakah, that barakah inshaAllah dress them, change them, Allah write a different destiny for them <coughs> and intercede for them. And then the food, the gift food. So on, on a day in which we know is opening upon the world, upon the days of difficulty that Allah have it in our accounts that when you can't find food Allah says that, as you gave in dunya for people to have food, I will give to you even in your dunya that if a day comes in which you can't find something to eat you have this credit within your account and we describe the days coming of immense difficulty in which people won't find food to eat 
Mawlana Shaykh said, it would be so bad that they would go by the graves to dig up the bodies to eat because they can't find food. But who? The people whom gave out food? No, people whom probably stepped on food that they don't care and what they have, what they do. So again, why in the last days they inspire these Naqshbandi charity and charitable works is to set ourselves and our accounts, give food, take care of children, help children so that your children will be taken care of. Feed children, why we chose this category is because they're dear to Prophet That when you feed them and take care of them, although you worry so much about your own children, you should take care of other children. And as a result because this is a mirror, the one whom worries about his own child but helps no other child then is selfish and doesn't open the way in the system of barakah. But the one whom busies himself helping other children, Allah will help your children because it works as a mirror not as a direct. You feeding your kids, what's the benefit of that? And then spoiling them with abundance. But go and feed the people whom have no food to eat. That barakah changes the life and the lives of our own children. And that's just dunya and imagine then all oh, the dress of akhirah and the grave. That you, you meet your Lord again with a companion, you enter, everyone enters into the grave with a companion. And that companion will be the deeds. If it was the badness and bad actions, there will be a hor horrific demon entering that grave with them and say, who are you and say, I'm your actions. Just the smell of that creature will make it like a jahannam for them, not even to what that creature going to do to them. But then Prophet described for us, then make your companion to be blessed like an angel with good deeds. So the one whom fasts, they're an angel coming to accompany them in the grave that, I'm your Ramadan. An angel coming saying, I'm the Qur'an in which you read, I'm the actions that you do. So every action will be these immense companions of light that come to make the grave beatific for the servant. So for dunya and akhirah to be blessed. So this is the immensity of, of, of charitable acts and acts of selflessness, not acts of selfishness, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata wa yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سامع الكرام وشبندية العلية وسائر سادات وصدقين عن فاتحة. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Sheikh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.